special case of charge. All right, so we're going to see how to simplify a power series in an ODE. So these power series are going to be centered at zero. And so the formula for the power series is just the sum from n equals zero to infinity, a sub n times x to the n. It's really easy to take the derivative of this term by term, even in the sigma notation, because for each term, we just use the power rule. Thank you. And the a sub n's are just constants, so they aren't affected by the derivative. But we uh, will drop the exponent by 1. This exponent will go down from n to n minus 1. Uh, the exponent goes out front. So bring the n out front and then drop it by 1. Now, the very first term in the series is just a sub 0. And so the derivative of that is 0. So we would actually start this at 1. Oh, and this is the derivative. All right, let's take the derivative of the derivative to get the second derivative. Same idea, we're going to take that exponent of n minus 1. We're going to take one down, pass it around, and we'll have n minus 2 bottles here on the wall. Again, one of those is a constant, the very first one, and so we'll start at n equal to 2. Right? Notice when n is 0 or 1, it's just 0, according to this part of the formula. As long as your series is centered at 0, these are always going to be the same formulas for y and its derivatives. So you don't have to actually go through this. You can just find them in the notes and re-put them in. It is nice to derive them, so you have to remember less. We're going to take this differential equation, and we're going to replace y and y prime and y double prime with these series. So let's substitute. the series into the differential equation. Now we're going to distribute each of the series to the polynomial in front of it. For the one on the right, there's nothing to really distribute because it's just a 2 there. And in fact, the one in the middle, again, nothing to really distribute. It's just a monomial. But for this first one, right, you want to distribute that to the 1 and to the 3x squared so that we don't have those parentheses there at the front. So um, I'm just going to start with this since that's going to stay the same. And if you multiply this first series by 1, you'll just get the series itself. And if you multiply it by 3x squared, then you'll get a 3x squared in front of it. So distributing to the 1 plus 3x squared just gives us 4 series instead of 3. Now we're going to bring the monomial coefficients into the sums. Right? You're able to bring that into the sigma notation because you're just distributing. Uh, the constants will go in front of the n's or n minus 1's uh, or a sub n's. And then the x's will multiply with the x's then there using the normal rules for exponents. There's nothing to do with the first one because there's nothing out front of it. right? But for instance, with the second one, we can bring that 3 right, inside the sum. Let's put it in front of the n. And then you can multiply the x squared and the x to the n minus 2. Now, using the rules of exponents, we would just add the exponents. 2 plus n minus 2 is just n. Right? So that's that one. 
Let's try that with the last two as well. Okay, we could bring this three inside the sum. Be a three n. And here we're multiplying x squared and x to the n minus 1. So that'll be 2 plus n minus 1, n plus 1. And we're going to bring that 2 inside the last sum. All right. Now, we'd like to combine these four sums together. We need two things to happen. We need to have them all have x to the n, and we'd like them all to start at the same starting point, say n equals 0 or n equals 1. We're first going to try to get the exponents to all match. You notice that for two of these sums, it's already x to the n, the fourth one and the second one. So we're just going to take the other two and, and shift those. Let's see how that works. The very first one you can increase this exponent by 2, going from n minus 2 to n. Now when you do that, you need to increase the index everywhere else by 2. So that goes to n plus 2, this goes to n plus 1, and this goes to n plus 2. You don't increase it at the starting point. You actually decrease that by the same amount. So instead of starting at 2, it will start at 0. Notice that when n is 2 in the first series, you get 2, 1, 2, 0. And when n is 0 in the second series, you get the same numbers 2, 1, 2, 0. This lets you know that they are the same series. That shifts the index on the first one. Uh, we now need to shift on the third one. Okay. We again want to have this be x to the n. So that's going to decrease the exponent by 1. Right? It went from n plus 1 to n, so it's going down by 1. You need to bring this down by 1 and this down by 1. But that means you need to raise this by 1. So it'll start at 2. Again, double check that they start at the same place. When n is 1, you have 1, 1, 2. Okay. When n is 2 here, you have 1, 1, 2. So they do match up. All right. Now we want to make sure that the sums all start at the same starting point. Okay, so the first one starts at 0. That's the first one. The second one starts at 2. The third one starts at 2. And the fourth one starts at 0. It's typically easier to try to take the ones that start at a later value and add on 0 terms to get them to start earlier. For instance, getting the ones that start at n equals 2 to start at n equals 0, because when n is 0 and 1, it's just 0. So we're going to try that. And you saw that worked in the first example. But it doesn't always work. And uh, hopefully, I think it won't here, and we'll show you how to deal with that. OK, so let's do the, so this one's good. This is the first series, right, that one. Uh, let's do this one. All right, so we want to, we'd like to just change this. So what happens when n equals 1? When n equals 1, then this would be 0, right? So it's OK to change that because the term you're adding on, the n equals 1 term, would just be 0. What about when n equals 0? Again, because of the n here, that would also be 0. So the difference between these two sums is just adding two zeros. And since adding zero doesn't do anything, we're able to do that. We've got to be careful when you just lower that starting point. You need to make sure that the terms you're adding are zero. All right, so that takes care of that one. 
right? The uh, third one, remember the fourth one's already okay. It already starts at zero. Uh, the fourth one I think might be a problem. What happens when n is one? Can change it to n equals one because that term is zero. But I can't change it to zero. Because if you were to start at n equals zero, uh, you would get something that's non-zero. Plus you would get a sub negative one, which doesn't really make sense, right? So this one can't be set back to n equals zero. And this happens sometimes. So we still have this dilemma. We need them all to start at the same point. So what we're going to do is have them all start at 1. Right? Obviously, can't push this one back any further. Um, so how do we make the other ones match up? How do we make the other sums start at 1? But we just take off the first term. So let's start with this one. This one's pretty easy because when n is 0, right, the very first term in this series, when n equals 0, is just 0. And so you can actually go back to making this n equals 1. So again, if your strategy at first is to try to make them all n equals 0, but if one of them can't go lower than n equals 1, then you got to change your strategy to then making them all start at 1, or whatever the lowest number you can get it to be is. Okay. So I've got two now that are matched up at n equals 1. All right, what about this first one? Can I just start this one at 1? No. Because when n equals 0, there is some non-zero term. So what is the term that we just need? We're ta basically taking that very first term and we're pulling it out of the sum. So when n equals 0, you would have 2 times 1 times a sub 2 times x to the 0. Right. So I'm just taking n equal to 0, and I'm putting it in here. When n is 0, you get 2 times 1 times a sub 2 times x to the 0. x to the 0 is just 1. So you just get 2 times a sub 2. And you're able to pull that one term out separate from the main series. Right, this is the strategy that will always work. You can always make something start later if you just take some of those terms outside the main series. So since this one here could not be lowered to n equal to 0, we're going to do things like this to make them all start at 1. Now, we can't just discard this term, but it will be in its own separate part of the equation. All right. I've got three of them matched up. There's one last one to do, and that's this one. Again, you cannot just change this to 1, because what happens when n is 0? I've got 2 times a sub 0 times x to the 0. x to the 0 is 1, so that just goes away. But you do have this negative 2 times a sub 0. So with the last one, I was able to do something similar, where I take that first term and pull it out of the main series, rewriting the series starting at 1 instead of 0. So that's the 0 term. Okay. Now you're able to combine these, and then you do have these two terms that are going to be outside the main series. 
um, but they'll have to add up to zero as well. So we're not going to go into all the details on how to figure out what the a sub n's are from this point, but let's go ahead and combine these sums. Uh, I believe this is the first one. And this is the second. This is the third, and this is the fourth. So, combining the sums, we'll have the 2 a sub 2 minus 2 a sub 0, and then we should be able to write this as one sum from n equals 1 to infinity and we should be able to factor off x to the n off all that and so what's left is everything else in these right? all the other pieces so we'll grab that and we'll grab that and we'll grab that so you have n plus 2 n plus 1 a sub n plus 2 is 3 n minus 1 a sub n minus 1 plus 3 hey these are the same that's kind of neat Hmm. I lost an N here. Second one lost in hand. There we go. So that's what's left once you factor off that x to the n and combine those sums. So you want to simplify what's in here because we're actually going to try to get some kind of formula and a lot of times you can combine things. You notice that these are kind of like terms because a sub n appears in both. So it'd probably be good to combine those. So let's see what we can do with combining that. I'm going to have 3n squared minus 3n. All right, so if you go ahead and distribute there, 3n squared minus 3n. And then there's also a minus 2 here. So minus 2. Can that be factored? 3n squared minus 3n minus 2. So it'd have to be 3 and 1 and 2 and 1. So maybe 3n. Uh, you need a minus 2 and minus 1. It's not going to work.
and you do the minus 2 here, that'll give you negative 6 and 1 is negative 5. All right. So that doesn't factor, but I was just checking that. So we'd leave it like that. And this gives you a relationship between a sub n plus 2, a sub n, and a sub n minus 1. Um, later on we're going to see how to actually use that relationship because this whole thing will be set equal to 0. And once you get these things started up, you can figure out the first couple a's, you can actually use this to get later in some recursive relationship. So I'm going to stop here and we'll see how to do the rest of it in the next methodology.